art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the very important scriptures that guided and helped to mold the brethren from the beginning up to this very time are found in the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you might show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If you were to distill down into a few points what really was the genius and the greatness of the Brethren Movement, I would suggest three things. Number one, what does it mean to be committed to Jesus Christ? Two, what does it mean to be obedient to the Bible? And three, what does it mean to be separated from the world?
sure what my week will hold. But what I do know is that on Sunday morning, Sunday school begins at 8.45. Song service begins at 9.45. Opening devotions begin at 10. White Oak is the solid anchor of my week. In a week that is uncertain, I can go to church and know exactly what's going to happen. Oh, not every word and every thing that happens, but I know that I'll go to Sunday school and I will hear a teacher giving solid theology and solid discussion around it. I know that I will hear a sermon that is solid and scriptural. And as I think about history, sometimes if we're not careful as historians, we get to romanticizing the past to the point where we almost wish we were there. Uh, and, and sometimes as I studied various uh, periods of history, I thought, wouldn't it have been nice to be at that time of history? Uh, but every time I start thinking that way, the Lord has a way of reminding me, but I made you for now. God didn't make us for the past. 
He made us for now. And so what we need to do is evaluate our relationship with God. Do we trust in him fully? Do we make him priority? Do we realize that he has given to us a goodly heritage? We can thank God for the heritage that he has given to us. And then will we be faithful to carry that on through the next generation? Oh.